going to be uh, testimonies about spring break. Uh, after that, we're going to switch gears, um, but I'm going to give you a heads up about what that's going to be, and that's going to be um, kind of tied in with what uh, the announcement was about the Answers in Genesis conference. Um, when, here's the, the question that you guys can come up and, and say something about. Um, when uh, you're tempted to doubt, what anchors you back to God? Um, it, it could be a miracle that you've witnessed. It could be uh, studying uh, apologetics and things like that. It could be anything. But what we can encourage one another that when, when you're tempted, what is, what is the anchor that brings you back to God? But first, we're going to talk about spring break. And uh, we're just going to have it kind of free form here. So I'm going to ask for volunteers to just come up. Let me give you a brief instruction for the microphone. There's a light right here. If it's green, it's on. If it's yellow, it's muted. It's on standby. Just press the button, and it goes back and forth between those. If you press and hold it, it turns it on or off. So if there's no light, it's off. Green, it's on. Yellow, it's on standby. If it's red, it means the battery's going, and we have a backup mic we can switch to. So, all right. Uh, who wants to be first talking about um, what God did on spring break? And let me, let me just give this... Um, Try to avoid inside jokes from your trip, or if you do, you need to explain it. Um, so we don't leave people wondering what's going on. And uh, focus on, on what, what God did and, and what he taught you on the trip. Everybody, 
our trip was really fun and really interesting. And I think everyone's kind of giggling just because of all the events that occurred. Um, I can give a brief summary of what happened. But so it's a long trip, you know, 20, 20 hours. Um, on the way down, we were driving along and we get to like Lexington, Kentucky. Um, and um, all of a sudden, we like our van starts to like start bumping like crazy, and we're like, what's going on? We don't know. And of course, like the people in the back are like really, and we don't know what's going on. And then like, Troy smoothly like pulls the car over like it's no big deal. And like we sit there and we're like, oh my gosh, we have a flat tire. So um, we ended up calling the police because cars like weren't getting over for us. Like we were on the shoulder of the like, expressway and cars were getting over, so we called the police. Dexter got to talk to him and like, you know, share policeman stories. <laughs> and, um, inside joke, kind of, Lexington, Kentucky, Kentucky is hiring police officers, so there's a lot of them. <laughs> that was exciting. Anyway, so that happened on the way down. Um, and our devotion time was really about um, like persevering through trials. Um, like Romans 8 kind of was like a really good time where we all shared about persevering through trials and like how do you do that and what are some tips to do that when you're down, like how do you get out of it kind of thing. So that was really cool. Um, uh, fast forward a week, um, a lot of really awesome things happened too, um, but fast forward a week, we're on our way back home and um, we are driving through, not quite to Lexington, Kentucky, but we were pretty close. <laughs> and all of a sudden, um, the van starts to like, I think maybe Troy was like hitting the gas, but like nothing was really happening. So we're kind of just like not moving very much. And all of a sudden, Troy smoothly pulls the car over again. <laughs> and we like, the van just all dies time. completely. Like everything is just done, like completely done. And we're all like looking at each other like we don't even know like another flat tire like we got five new tires like how is this possible and like the van is dead completely and at that point you're all very tired and cramped and like ready to be home and um like immediately we prayed about it and we like kind of talked about romans 8 and like persevering through trials and that kind of thing um and what had happened was the battery died and the alternator died. So a tow truck came and towed the van with people in it <laughs> to a motel and we stayed overnight there. And we just gotta give a shout out to Troy because he fixed the van like pretty much on his own. <laughs> um, really like on his own. Um, and Dexter helped a little bit too. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess to apply this personally to me, um, I got back from Florida and we were all very tired. We were not expecting to get back at midnight. Um, it was actually like Monday that we actually got back. And we were expecting to be back on Sunday and like everyone had homework. You know, we we're all kind of in the same boat. Um, personally for me, I got back and um, didn't get a lot of sleep. Had to get up at 6.30. And um, came back from my class and found out that my computer was like not working. It had crashed, and like I had a lot of homework to do. And um, I was, it was just like a another trial. And I kind of was like frustrated with God. Like this is all happening. Like I'm still in the middle of this, so it's not like I figured everything out by any means. But um, I think like a takeaway for me was just really like that devotion time that we had every day talking about trials and persevering is something that um, is kind of a cliche, I think, and we, we don't always know how to persevere like when we're in the middle of it, but like God provides, and like God provided Troy with wisdom to fix the van, God provided, um, like on the way down, he provided a tow truck guy to like help change our tire because we couldn't even get the tire, like the spare tire off of the van. Um, he provided like an AutoZone guy to kind of assist Troy with like tools and stuff. And he is going to provide like in my trial too. So it's just a really cool takeaway that I'm still like learning and, and that kind of thing.
Um, for me, it was kind of cool to see just like the trip start because um, I try and ask us to do like a devotional, like to prepare one. And so I was going through like my previous mission trips. And so just kind of something that stuck out to me was like expectations and just like not expecting too much, not expecting too little kind of thing. And it was cool just to see that because even before I shared it, we went through a trial. Like we were expecting to get to Florida with no troubles, but we had a flat tire. Like things like that. And just, I don't know, we've had, we had a couple trials like during the week, but we were also really, really blessed during the week. Like, I don't know, it seems like, I don't know, we had like our food situation going and we didn't use as much money for our food, but then we had like four different groups give us meals and like another person gave us a free meal from KFC. Like it just seems like we kept getting blessed more than we were blessing people. Um, and I don't know, like the word expectation kind of was like going through my heart that we like, don't expect anything because God will change your plans. <laughs> so, yeah. So, going off of what Bren said about God's perfect plan and what Hannah said, okay, and what Hannah said about trials and what Deb said about expectations, I mean, my story, <laughs> wrote it all down because I get really sidetracked. And I forget what I'm going to say. So, um, at the beginning of the trip, I was like really close minded about the whole thing. I had it all planned out how it was all going to go because, of course, my plan is perfect, right? So, yeah. Um, and I knew that trips like this made me really anxious and really uncomfortable, but I was open to whatever God had and whatever. So, the trip down was going great for the most part until our flat tire. I didn't, I wasn't, I really got car sickness and I wasn't feeling that at all. Everything was just going perfect <laughs> until the flat tire. And then I was like fighting panic attacks that whole time and just so upset that, like, why is this happening? You know, everything was supposed to go perfect with the mission trip after all. Um, so yeah, um, I planned everything on what I wanted. And what God was teaching me even through that before I even thought what he was teaching me is that what I want is most of the time, not really what he wants or what he has planned. Um, so yeah, the rest of the week kind of went the same way. Um, my plan was always going wrong. And at the end of the week, I started feeling really bad, like really physically uncomfortable and really mentally uncomfortable. And I was really discouraged that I was on a mission trip attempting to serve God, and I felt like crap. And I really was not enjoying it at all. Um, and what I figured out what was my problem was that the whole week was about me. And I did not care what everyone else was feeling or what everyone else wanted to do. It was just all about me. And even more importantly, my eyes had totally been closed to what God wanted and what God was going to do. Um, so I woke up one morning. I was trying to think when I was writing this in class. I was paying attention in class. I was also really <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I woke up one morning and what was on repeat in my head was Psalm 13.5, which is but I trust in your unfeeling love, and my heart rejoices in your salvation. And that whole day, all I kept hearing in my head was, trust in me, trust in me, like over and over and over. And I was like, I'm trying, I'm really trying, but everything is just, ugh. And it seemed very impossible, um, because I like to control everything. There were things happening at home. My phone was blowing up with issues from my sister and my family and everything. And of course, the never-ending battle inside of me. And I finally just gave it up, and I told God, okay, fine, you know what, I give up. I'm not going to control this anymore. Clearly, that's not working, so I'm giving it to you. I'm trusting your love and your power, and believe it or not, not coincidentally, my mood completely changed. Um, I had just dropped every expectation that I had planned and just decided that I was just going to go with the flow, and it ended up being a lot better. Um, and I just gave the reins to Jesus, like Carrie Underwood. <laughs> Jesus takes the wheel. Um, and on the way home, um, obviously if I wouldn't have given it up to God, the way home would have been even worse than the way there, because obviously the way home did not go as planned at all. 
Um, but because we got to stop and we got to all hang out together for a lot longer of a time, we all got closer, and it was just, it was really great. Um, and despite when things don't seem to be going my right way, I learned that in the end, my right way is only the right way in my mind. And in reality, God's way is the right way, and we need to give up the control and let him lead us right way. So that's what I learned, among a million other things, but that's what I was really taught. share a little bit of what we did, because you guys don't know. Um, we, well, I, at least I was really excited to go down there because I wanted to help build a house, but that didn't end up happening. Um, we ended up um, serving a couple needy families by um, painting the outsides of their houses, um, and it was something that they weren't able to do for themselves um, because of medical issues or um, things like that. So you know, we were able to bless them by um, you know, making their houses look better and um, just bless them through um, our attitudes and um, just the way we were able to serve them. Um, and in return, you know, they blessed us even more, I think, than we blessed them because we were just you know, painting their house, but um, and they were making us food and buying us food and um, telling us about their lives, and it was a really great experience, uh, I think, for all parties involved.
not be expected of what he can do, and, like, God's silly, and, like, he loves us so much, and he'll just do these things, and, like, just being aware of, like, him and his beauty and stuff. And Lewis is so inspiring. 
and like he should really just go into ministry after this. Um, and so he's a senior in high school, and he he's a beautiful person. And so he just raised his hand and he said, "Ladies, no man is willing to die for you." And he was just like, and then he went on and told like all about how like. God is gonna like God's going to change you and like you should like God change you and like not nah, man. So like that was super inspiring and like all the high schoolers are really inspiring to me and that just like furthered my passion for them and I just I really like them. So that's kind of what God's been laying on my heart, especially with this mission trip and so. I'm Emily. Um, I led this trip. It was a really good experience. Um, going up towards it, I had no anxieties. I was fine. Then the day of, that was, that was fun. <laughs> I, I started thinking what was happening and I uh, had another story I was going to share, but God has other plans, of course, so I'm going to share another one. Um, so I was talking to this little girl that was sort of my buddy for the whole entire week, and we only had like the cases were for like three days, I think. Yeah. yeah, three days. And we had extra time on at the end of Tuesday. So we were, he, BJ grabbed a whole bunch of um, color by not color numbers, uh, connected dots. And so it was the connected dots of Moses and uh, as a baby, because that was our lesson. It was it had to do with the lesson, but we weren't supposed to color. And I was like, I was getting to talk to her like one on one, which is my favorite and getting to her, like, help her, like, she kept on doubting herself a lot, which is also often what I do, and, which is really cool to talk to her about that, and she was like, I don't, I don't know, I'm like, do you know these numbers, and she's like, no, and I was like, uh, I think you do, and she was one up to 40, so she slowly does it, she colors, the picture was fantastic, probably better than I could do, I was like, oh, okay, well, you are going to be an art major. <laughs> and um, uh, later I told her, like, can you write your name on the bottom? So she wrote her name. And, but then I noticed that there was a question on the bottom. And it was, how, I don't know, something, how does God protect us? Thank you. <laughs> and um, so I was able to talk to her about that and talk to her about, like, how we can go run to God in prayer and he'll always be there and, like, listen to us. And while I was able to ask her, I was like, hey, like, how does God, like, protect us and she kind of like shook her head and so I was able to like share that with her and I was like you know that you know that he's like your best friend you can run to him with everything when you're excited happy sad anything and he'll listen like no matter what and I guess just seeing that joy on her face and just remembering like the simple truth and how that is super impactful and oftentimes we forget that as college kids and I do a lot and so that taught me a lot in the local week and just finding comfort in him. So, it's good. Okay. I don't like it. You gotta tell me to do that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we did more than just hang out with the kids. Um, it's actually, Inner City Impact is, it's in, it's outside of Chicago a little bit, um, and it's like this huge building that they got, that a uh, church used to own, whatever, they got it, they've been renovating it, like stripping everything down, rebuilding it, and so the first floor is like the main thing, and they've got like game rooms and like cafeteria, classrooms, whatnot, and then the third floor, they recently opened a new gym, and so we've been playing, we played sports all week, it was beautiful, and then <laughs> the second floor, is like where they stored all this poop out of. There's like couches <laughs> and like tables. And so in the mornings, and, and, uh, and in the mornings, we were taking stuff into the dumpster, which means that you get to smash things with a sledgehammer, and it's beautiful. <laughs> and so we would do that, and we would be exhausted, and then we would go hand out flyers after lunch because they opened the new gym and they wanted everyone to know. So we got to. We got to get into the community, like handing out flyers, seeing the kids as they came from the schools and whatnot, because we'd go stand out there once they got out. But we also got to pour into the kids in the afternoon. We had 
different nights of different ages and whatnot. But we also got to pour into the, like, I don't know what I, what I was going to use. <laughs> Inner city impact itself. I don't know what word I was going to say, but that's okay. But so we, <laughs> we, I liked how it was a mixture of a bunch of different things that we did, because so often I go on trips and they're like, you're going to do a kid CBS, and then this team is going to go paint this house. And <laughs> But not. But it was a good mixture. And I think that it helped me, like, it was able to see God through multiple ways, which is cool. Thank you want that? Okay, so I wasn't going to share this, but going off of what Becca said, um, so we handed out flyers, and after, like, handing out, I don't know how many, it was like 800 a day, like, it was a lot of flyers. We would like turn around and just see blue flyers like litter the ground because the kids would just throw them out. So we were like, I don't know, I was feeling like really defeated, like, oh, we didn't do like anything, we just wasted like an hour of our day, like, we didn't make an impact. But then after the whole week was done, UJ, the leader, came to us and was like, hey guys, so since you handed out flyers, we had 28 new kids join the program and come. So that was really cool just to see like um, the fruit of our labor and like that we actually did make an impact. So what I was actually going to share. So uh, Friday was our last day of work, and Friday night we were able to all like share communion together, and then um, share like our highlights of the week, and then also um, what we like personally struggle with the most. And that was really hard for like all of us, I think, to share because who wants to share their like weakest moments? And so one thing I shared was that I often compare myself to others, and I think a lot of people can like relate to that. And so then the next day, let's fast forward, we got the chance to go to um, Pacific City Garden Mission. What? Pacific City Garden Mission. The homeless shelter. Yes, that homeless shelter. And, sorry, my mind is like, oh, okay. And I'm nervous. Um, so, Okay, so we went on a tour of the mission, and it was really cool. Like, it's a huge mission. It um, sleeps over a thousand homeless people every night. Um, and Lorenzo was our tour guide, and he was awesome. He like shared his testimony with us, and one of the things he said, um, which I don't think was a coincidence at all, he said, "Some people covet other people's blessings, but that blessing wasn't made for you." And I think that goes like right along with what I was saying about how I compare myself with others. Like, the hair blessing wasn't made for me. Like, I'm blessed with my own thing. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's what I learned. All right, so, like Becca said, we have they had a brand new gym up on the third floor. And so, uh, we're in the Spanish district, so they like to play soccer a lot. So, yeah, they are. Um, so you're thinking of a college kid, you know, like taller, faster, longer legs, longer strides, should be better at soccer than little elementary kids like that's all. Absolutely not. And, like I'm, we're sporting upstairs, and like I'm like going like crazy, and all of a sudden I don't have the ball anymore. And I'm like, wait, where'd the ball go? All of a sudden, I look behind me, some little girl like this tall is like already shooting, scoring a goal, and I'm like, wait, what? So it's absolutely crazy just to like hang out with these like spectacular kids and. Just to see the like inner city impact, you know, the impact is what has the biggest like thing on me. Um, I went on van ride and I was talking to a guy named Brian. He's awesome. Um, and he was just giving me testimonies of people who have been through the program. Like this one guy has been in it since he was in third grade. And he like questioned God, he didn't believe in God, he straight up said to an intern, like, you're wasting your time. You know, like, God doesn't love me, God doesn't do anything for me. And, like, God worked through him. He still went to Inner City Impact. He still went to things with Inner City Impact, heard the devotionals, heard everything that they were preaching about God. And his senior year of high school, he turned his life around, and um, he was at a retreat that they put on or something. And it was... I didn't prepare, so what did he say? He's like, you, you tell me that God loves me no matter what. You tell me that whatever I do, God still loves me. I want that. And he said, he looked into the eye 
of the leader there and said, I want that. And just to see that impact all throughout his life from third grade on to high school is probably the most amazing thing. And later on, that guy is now about to graduate high school and he was about to be a dropout, but now he is with his inner city impact. He is continuing his education. And there's a lot more other stories that he's been telling me. And just to see the love of God, like the love of God just isn't in a big city. It's not in a Detroit, it's not in a Miami, Florida. It's not in like a prestigious city like that. It's in the bottom of the Chicago, it's in the bottom inner cities, it's everywhere. And it's the same love, same constant love from the big cities to the small cities. It doesn't matter where the heck you're at. You know, God loves you, he loves you the same way, no matter where you are, no matter who you are, no matter what you do. So that's pretty much like all I impacted me the most, just like God's love, you know, and just getting close to these guys, like uh, like you said, we did, we communion together, and then we just basically opened up to each other, and you know, when you really open up to everybody, you just really start to trust the people on your trip, and you share things that you don't normally would share, which makes other people share things that you don't normally would share, and you start to like know people on a deep level, and with everything being said, Literally everyone, it was just completely awesome. It was a great trip.
So, um, did anyone go on a mission trip uh, for spring break that wasn't necessarily a his house trip? Did anyone want to share something? <laughs> got back at 1 o'clock, so this is all very raw, and it's going to be all over the place because I haven't had time to really wrap my mind around everything yet. But um, a lot of people mentioned when they were talking just about how God's plan is so sovereign, and that he's really been showing that to me a lot in the past couple weeks and months, and he showed it to me again on this trip um, to Guatemala. Um, a couple weeks ago, I talked about how I'm going to be organizing a VBS for a ministry that I work for. And they had told me when I had been like starting to like, get, I guess, figuring out what the role would be, that it would be for an orphanage um, in a community in Guatemala that all the kids there have HIV. Um, they're all positive with HIV. And um, so I have been kind of making plans in the mindset that we're going to be doing this uh, VBS in an orphanage. And so I guess to backtrack a little bit, um, we, my team leader and I got there Friday afternoon, it's all blur. It was such a quick trip and it was really, it was very beneficial, but um, we got there Friday afternoon and we went and met the community members because we're not only going to be doing work at the orphanage there, but in like the whole community. And so we met the members there and we kind of played with some of the kids in the community too, and that was really fun, and I immediately felt really connected to those kids as well. And then we went, and we went to the um, orphanage there too. And we didn't have a lot of time after that to really get acquainted with the kids there, but I knew that um, we'd be going there a different day just to the orphanage, so I wasn't super worried about not having enough time to connect with the kids. So then we met with our ministry partner, and we were kind of talking about overall stuff for the summer. And she mentioned that, she goes, I'm not sure if you knew this or not, but the kids in the orphanage are actually still in school, and they will be this summer. And immediately I was like, uh, no, I didn't know that. No one, no one told me that. So I was trying to kind of wrap my brain around the fact, like, wow, that's kind of a big detail to get left out. And the last thing that kids who have been in school, all they need is another structured program type thing to occupy their time with. So I told my team leader, I was like, wow, like when we got back to our hotel that night, I was like, wow, I'm really feeling unneeded. Like, why am I here now? Like, I don't understand this. But then later on, talking with our ministry partner, we started talking about more plans. And as it turns out, the kids in the community of Sumpongo, they aren't educated because you have to pay for an education and the poverty level is so high that no one can afford an education and it's not governmentally like mandated. So none of the kids in that community have anything going on during the day, which leaves the day open for any activities that might need to be um, I guess, taking place. And so instead of doing the VBS in the orphanage like I had been in the mindset of doing, we're actually going to be doing it in the community as a whole. And then we're still going to be at the orphanage, but we'll be meeting different needs. The kids, Betty, our ministry partner, said that the kids really, instead of more like EDS type structured stuff, they just need affection and love. And so we're going to just still go there and just love on the kids and probably still have like some worship time with them. Um, but it'll be a lot less structured than the EDS that we'll do in Supongo. And to add on to that, I have been. Um, in my VBS plans, I went and like talked with her about um, just like an outline that I've kind of started for themes for each week in the summer. And she was looking over it and she's like, you could even mention these themes to the pastor at the church. And if you wanted to incorporate it into um, like sermons, then like the whole family would be, I guess, like learning the same thing every week. And the kids would be doing stuff in VBS and the parents would get the same thing in church service on Sunday. And like all of these dots were connected and um, it was really cool too because that's something that my church is really focusing on right now at home. So I'm already passionate about like family um, connections being made and now getting to find out that I get to like do that this summer is really cool. So yeah, God is good. So, um, was there another mission trip from that 
looking at his house check. Um, do you think we have time to move to the next other question? That's actually 8.30, not 7.30. Okay, we will save that for another time. Um, but let me just say, um, on our trip, God was definitely there. We were blessed abundantly on the trip, and there were also some major trials. Like, you know, through the flat tire and puke and scrapes and ER trip and the battery and alternator and, and all these things, um, it was, everything was okay. Like, there, there might have been a couple people internally panicking a little bit, but as a group, we were, it was okay. And we just went through it and God was in control. And, uh, you know, like, like this, uh, you, you never know, you, you, you want to expect God to move, but you don't want to, like, line up exactly the way you think it should uh, on a mission trip. And uh, I encourage you, in the future, when a mission trip opportunity comes, if you haven't been on one before, or have, um, take the opportunity and, and let God challenge you, and um, it's a great way to serve, and he, it's draining, and it's filling, and it's, it's all a bunch of things at the same time, but it's, it's all um, God doing some amazing things for that. So, um, why don't we have the worship team come back up? Um, our prayer team will still be available over on the side. If you want something to pray, uh, if you want to pray about anything, um, maybe something major happened over spring break, maybe um, stressed out coming back to classes or family issues, anything, you can come pray with us. Um, interested in, in learning more about Jesus. We weren't the only group doing mission trips over spring break. Um, this is just a random thought while they're getting ready. Uh, I got a call today. Um, Beach Reach is, is another uh, kind of common destination for, for mission trips for spring break. They, uh, it's an organization that brings in college groups and they go out to witness to the people who are going to party in Florida and different areas for spring break. And um, they, they give them van rides and provide meals and you know, just talk to them about Jesus. And I got a call today because some group in Texas went and did beach reach and met someone from SVSU who accepted Christ and they're like, hey, we met this guy and you want his name and his number and you can disciple him. Like, okay, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool. So um, he had to work tonight, but I'm going to meet with him tomorrow. And so God, God's doing stuff through not just us, but um, all over the place. So uh, go ahead and stand, and we'll work.